From Cairo 7 Eyewitness News, this is a breaking news special report. And good afternoon, everyone. Steve Rabel with you as Mayor Mike McGinn and County Executive Dow Constantine moved to the podium to talk about a possible new deal to bring an NBA arena to the city. Here's the mayor. In the room. <laughs> and uh, there's been some excitement in the air recently. And we are pleased today to announce that we have received a proposal to create a public-private partnership that could result in the construction of an NBA and NHL sports facility within our existing stadium district in Seattle. <laughs> On first look, this is an exciting proposal and it could mean big things for our community. What does this mean for Seattle? If we succeed, this project means hundreds of millions of dollars of private investment, an investment that will help our city recover from the longest and deepest recession since the Great Depression. The arena will be designed to incorporate the needs of the NHL, and so will be the only such facility here. And, most important, it could mean that the Seattle Supersonics will play once again in our city. They were born here in 1967, a time when the NBA was really beginning to take shape, and where it performed successfully for over 40 years. And who can forget that it was the Seattle Supersonics that brought us a world championship under the leadership of Coach Lenny Wilkins. And Coach Wilkins, an NBA Hall of Famer and Seattle icon, will be part of helping move this forward. Thank you. Now, a major reason we're here today, um, and you've seen some of the newspaper reports, is because of Chris Hansen. Chris grew up here in Seattle. He graduated from Roosevelt High School. And he approached us several months ago about bringing an NBA team back to Seattle. He has presented us a promising path to bring the NBA back to Seattle and introduce the NHL to our state. He was and is a major fan of the Supersonics. He grew up with them, and he can tell you the starting lineup of the 19, 1979 World Championship team without any prompting. And I'd like to talk to you about what the process has been to date. He, he asked for a meeting with, with me um, when he first um, wanted to explore this idea. And I sat down with a couple of my senior staff, and he told us of his interest in bringing a new arena, to Seattle and of bringing the Sonics back and of bringing an NHL team. He wanted to know if we were prepared to do the hard work necessary on our end if he was serious on his end. And we were. And we did have some requirements that we had to share with them. We knew that we had to get a fair return on our investment. The people of Seattle passed I-91 and they've made their, their expectations clear. We also um, wanted to ensure that the arena, therefore, if it was going to get a fair return, had to be funded through its own revenue streams, and that it would require a significant investment from the investors to make it work. Equally important was we wanted to ensure that we had the type of relationship that would be long-term and enduring, because if the Sonics are to return, we want them to stay. After I first met Chris and I understood from him his deep commitment to the project and that he had the wherewithal and capacity to make the project a reality, I directed my chief of staff, my director of policy and operations to work with our city budget office to review the opportunity and make sure that we were in a position to work collaboratively with an investment group and that we were in a position to understand our options and make decisions if a proposal were presented to us. We knew we needed outside expertise, so we retained outside expertise uh, by hiring an expert on arena financing as well as a local expert on taxation issues to make sure that we were proceeding in a way that we understood what uh, the needs would be of us and that we were protecting the city. Today, we have received a proposal that I believe reflects the work by the city, by the county, and by Chris's team 
to meet the goals I set forth at our initial meeting. Let me describe the proposal. First, it is to construct, and it is a proposal, and there's more work to be done. The proposal is to construct an arena in the Soto area that would accommodate the NBA, NHL, concerts, and other cultural events. The proposal includes a significant private investment from Chris Hansen and the investors he will bring to this uh, proposal, over $500 million to go towards the facility and the purchase of a team. The proposal includes a maximum public partition participation of $200 million combined from the city and county. This is very important. The public investment will be repaid through rent payments and tax revenue generated directly as a result of the project. I want to be clear. This is revenue that would not otherwise exist if it were not for the arena project. The city and county will ultimately own the land and the facility. And the proposal includes a number of financial protections for the city and county. The proposal is that the team and the owners would guarantee repayment of public investments. They are proposing a binding non-relocation agreement for 30 years. They are prom their proposal includes a responsibility from the team and owners for all construction cost overruns, as well as ongoing maintenance, operating, and capital work on the facility for 30 years. And as an additional protection, we requested, and they agreed, to provide a security reserve, which will hold funds to be available to cover any shortfalls. The proposal further specifies that it will comply with Initiative I-91. And this was important. It was the will of the voters, and uh, I voted for it as well. So this is an important, uh, it's an important uh, statement from the voters of what their expectations are for an investment. Now, I've detailed the proposal, um, and there are more details available. The press is, uh, you know, we're available uh, to, to brief the press in, in, in further detail uh, that, of what we've received. I want to turn this over now to Dow Constantine uh, to, to talk more about next steps and, and some more details surrounding this. But I, I want to make a couple of comments. First of all, this is a full partnership between the city and county, and a full partnership is required to make this work. And over the last two years, Dow and I have uh, been able to collaborate on a number of projects. When uh, the prior executive and mayor couldn't agree on, on a jail facility, we were able to reach a long-term agreement that's saving both the county and the city millions and millions of dollars and have forged a relationship for it. We work together to help uh, the city to help with financing of a county-owned bridge that connects city neighborhoods at South Park Bridge. And we're committed to working together on other issues, and we're committed to working together on this one. Um, this is a, ultimately a regional investment that will be a benefit for the entire region. So with that, I am uh, pleased to announce Dow Constantine. Thank you, Mayor McGinn. Well, a lot of you know I was born and raised in this town, born even before the Sonics were born. And I grew up, Coach, cheering on my team, and I was right there on those streets for that celebration as a school kid in 1979. Well, my fellow fans, yes, we have a chance to do something special. Along with Mayor McGinn, I am so pleased to announce that we have this proposal to bring the NBA back to King County and to the city of Seattle. No, it's, it's not game seven. This is, this is the tip-off of the first game of the preseason. This is, this is a set of principles. It's a start. But after so long without any real good options, it's just great to have a chance to get back on the court. And this proposal could be special. It represents the first real path we've been able to see to bring back our beloved Sonics and to attract a whole new league, the NHL, for hockey fans of the Northwest. Now, Mayor McGinn mentioned the 1979 championship, but many of you will remember that was not Seattle's first professional sports championship. No, that came in 1917 when the Seattle Metropolitan's Hockey Club 
became the first American team to win the Stanley Cup. So thanks to you Metropolitan fans for being here. <laughs> but this proposal we've received is worthy of serious consideration. If this agreement comes to fruition, it would become one of the top three arenas in the NBA in terms of private investment. For any arena agreement, the mayor and I have outlined several principles that must be met. He's touched on a few of those. But I want to go through the full list and tell you what we've required. And I want to tell you that on first read, this proposal appears to meet those principles. The project does not rely on new taxes. It would be self-funding. Existing city and county services would not be adversely impacted. Private investors would bear the project risk. Private investors would be responsible for any cost overruns. Public participation would be limited to issuing bonds to finance the facility. The public debt would be backed only by the taxes generated by this new facility and by rents paid by the team's owners. In any given year, shortfalls would as well be covered by the teams. So in practical terms, no public subsidy. And private investors, and this is remarkable, would put in nearly $300 million of private money into a facility and land that ultimately would be owned by the public. It appears that Chris Hansen's proposal meets the requirements we set. But we need to be sure. So today, the mayor and I are appointing an arena review panel to take a closer look at this proposal. We've asked a number of citizens to join in this group. First, the co-chairs. We've asked Jan Drago, former Seattle and King County Council member. Maud Dadon, former chair of the Metropolitan Seattle Chamber of Commerce and head of a financial firm, Seattle Northwest Securities. And the aforementioned coach and player coach, Lenny Wilkins. Other members represent the diversity of our community and the expertise we need to take a hard look at this proposal. David Freiboth, who's the executive secretary of the Martin Luther King County Labor Council. Doris Koo, the former president and CEO of Enterprise Community Partners. Karen Lee, the CEO of Pioneer Human Services. Estella Ortega, the executive director of El Centro de la Raza. Greg Smith founder and CEO of Urban Visions, Anthony Miles, partner in the Seattle law firm of Stoll Reeves, LLP, and Jill Wakefield, the chancellor of the Seattle Community Colleges. We chose these leaders for their broad experience, expertise, and commitment to evaluate all of this proposal, every aspect. We expect them to give a frank and honest appraisal and to let us know if they think this is something that makes sense for our community to pursue. If it pencils out, construction of this arena would create thousands of good paying construction jobs, the kinds of jobs we've been fighting for, fighting to create, to get us out of this recession. And games played by a new NBA team would bring visitors who spend dollars, thousands of dollars, to boost our regional economy on hotels and restaurants, not just in Seattle, but on the east side, in SeaTac, in Federal Way, on outdoor recreation businesses and wineries in Woodenville. Between this arena and the expansion of the State Convention Center, for which I've been fighting, we could create $1.3 billion in new construction activity and thousands upon thousands of jobs for construction workers who have been so hard hit by this recession. Those salaries help not only the families of those construction workers, but they circulate over and over in this economy, helping to accelerate our recovery from recession and put us back on the road to prosperity. You know, as a local kid, I can tell you those were heady days for our region when the Sonics won 
the 1979 NBA title. A pretty good finish to a decade that didn't start so well with the cancellation of that other Sonic, the SST, the supersonic transport, and the signs advising us to turn out the lights as we left town. So yes, I'm very interested in bringing the NBA back to Seattle, to King County, to Washington State. We've been handed an offer worth looking at. It's important to understand that a proposal like this would not have been possible without the environment of partnership we've fostered here in King County. The mayor alluded to it, the projects we've been working on together. I think we've disagreed quite publicly on some of the issues that have come up over the last several years. But we have not allowed those disagreements to bleed over into all the other work that we do. And here is a project on which the city and county and this entire community can work together. So I thank the county staff, particularly my chief of staff, Sung Yang, who has spent many, many hours working to get us to this day. I thank the mayor and the city staff for their efforts on this, and I thank Chris Hansen for coming forward and look forward to the steps to come. Mayor McGinn. Thank you. So since Dow called out a staff member, um, I don't know if they're here. Hall Walker, Deputy Budget Director, Ethan Ralph, Director, De Director of Operations. You have been watching live coverage here on Cairo 7, a joint press conference between the Mayor of Seattle, Mike McGinn, and County Executive Dow Constantine, talking about what could be, what might be, what they hope one day will be, a new arena for both NBA and NHL to take place on this site in the Soto District of South Seattle. But will it become a true project, a $500 million project, both private and public? Many, many questions remain to be answered. We're looking at the venue now. Remember, there was a good deal of apathy after the Sonics left. So will there be a new team to come to play here in Seattle? Big question. The NBA has signed off on nothing yet. Plus, we're going to find out more about the true costs of this project and what it will mean to all of us, the taxpayers. We'll get you the very latest at CairoTV.com anytime. And, of course, at Cairo 7 Eyewitness News beginning at 5 o'clock. I'm Steve Rabel. We'll see you later this afternoon.